That's my D minor to the D flat seven flat five to a C um, C minor seven. If I do a flat five, that's really nice. If I do the flat five, and I thought of it as a blues note, then I could have a major seven interval. That's nice. So I go from the flat five to the four. Point. If I did the flat seven over the F and the sharp five, and if I add my pinky on the flat five, then what I could do, I'm going to try to keep the flat seven where it is. But I'm going to try to raise that B string note upward and take the G string and bring it down. First fret on the D string, along with the fourth and the second, and then that changes. Fourth on the A string, second on the G, and fourth on the B. And then after that, second on the A string, first on the G, and first on the high E. And then the A, because that low note just keeps going down, so that'd be fifth fret on the E string, and the fourth fret on the uh, D string and the second fret on the high E string. So the low note goes, the middle note goes, and the high notes go. So parallel motion on the bottom or similar a uh, similar motion on the bottom and then counterpoint on the top. And then take me to whatever chord was next. Um, B flat major seven. All right. I'm going to play that lick some more because I'm going to forget that. In fact, I think I'm going to try that lick every time I get to a five chord tonight. <laughs> so just to make see if I can remember it. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so what was that 5-1 business? Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah, I like that a lot. Wow, it sounds really dark because you don't hear the third. If I put the third in there, it'd sound less dark. I do that on the B string. Oh, that's a great lick, man. I think so, anyway. <laughs> All right. So, quick. Uh, I'm gonna kind of re-explore what I've done so far. G minor.
I could do A. Major, minor, seven. 